Police continue to investigate a deadly car crash that shut down a section of Loop 375 last night. Good evening, I'm Adrian Alvarez. And I'm Kagan Harsha. It happened around 6.30. Authorities have identified the victim as a 35-year-old man, but they are not yet releasing his name, pending notification of family. The man, we're told, was a passenger in a van that ran a red light at America's and collided with a semi-truck. Three other people in the minivan were also taken to the hospital with injuries, including the 75-year-old driver. The driver of the truck was not hurt. A proposed Loop 375 extension will be debated this evening. Carlos Calvo of TxDOT says the final proposal will be presented tonight at 6.30 with a chance for the public to weigh in after. The proposed extension of Loop 375 would connect downtown to West El Paso. The four-way toll road would begin downtown where 375 currently ends at Santa Fe Street and ends where I-10 meets Paisano. There have been concerns with the new project, namely if the road would be built in the historic... Chihuahua District, as well as the road's distance to the border. We have a reporter at, the, at the, that hearing, and we'll have full reaction tonight at 10. A Las Cruces man who admitted to murdering a realtor was sentenced to more than life in prison. According to court documents, 26-year-old Mario Mendez killed 62-year-old Jack Hadley during a burglary at Hadley's Las Alturas home September 23rd of last year. He then tried burning the crime scene and the victim's body before fleeing. Doña Ana County Sheriff's investigators later arrested Mendez as he returned to New Mexico after having tried to escape to Arizona. Investigators added that Mendez confessed to the crime while being questioned. Mendez was sentenced to life in prison plus 25 years Monday in district court. Just a month after the Food and Drug Administration said Monster Energy drinks were linked to five deaths, Another caffeine booster is now being investigated. This time it's the five hour energy shot. News Channel 9's Jacqueline Correa spoke with a local dietitian today and she joins us with more details. Jackie? Well, Adrian and Kagan, those five hour energy shots you see on counters almost everywhere are linked to 33 hospitalizations and 13 deaths. The news was released today, but the incidents, they span four years. It has to be more awareness of the dangers of this drink. And um, I know that it has caused the number of visits to emergency rooms tenfold increase since 2009. Vlasa Pinto sees people come to the hospital all the time with serious symptoms from energy drinks. Most of the time it's um, heart palpitation, irritability, ner nervousness, vomiting and also kidney failure. The shots contain about 215 milligrams of caffeine, which is like two eight-ounce cups of coffee. According to the FDA, there's no evidence the caffeinated drinks caused any of the deaths or injuries, but an investigation is ongoing. Make it look like a fun product and something so convenient without ever indicating that excess of it can cause death. The shots also contain vitamins and amino acids, which classifies it as a dietary supplement. So five hour energy is not required to disclose the amount of caffeine in its two ounce energy shot. Commercials do want me to go out and try it, but I just don't trust caffeine. <laughs> yeah, they should have uh, more transparency on what's inside. But Paul Hernandez says it can also be a lifesaver. I remember I was uh, driving back uh, from El Paso, two o'clock in the morning, and I took a five hour energy drink and I felt pleasantly awake. I think it could be a problem for another people that might not know and have my, my have some health problems or stuff like that. It's supposed to give you this feeling of being rested and alert, but it's artificial and it's a temporary high. I just think it's bad for their body. But I see every day the dangers of overdoing this kind of an energy supplement, so I do not approve it at all. In a statement, the company that makes the energy shot says it's taking the reports very seriously and suggests five-hour energy only be used by hardworking adults who need an extra boost of energy. Live in the News Center, Jacqueline Crea, News Channel 9. All right, thank you, Jackie. Well, if you've been outside, you've noticed it's getting a bit chilly out there. Chief Meteorologist Chuck DeBroder joins us now with our first look at weather. Hi, Chuck. Hi, everyone. Well, you know what? We're watching a cold front move in, but it's a weak cold front, not a lot of cold air behind it. Today, we hit our predicted high of 70 in El Paso, 68, Alamogordo, and Ruidoso, right at 61 degrees. Winds are light for now. That'll change, especially west El Paso, western slopes of the area mountains, 
you're going to see some gusty to windy category winds. Why? We have that slightly cooler air mixing in tonight and that weak cold front. We could see wind gusts approaching 40 miles per hour west of the Franklins and an overnight low of 44. High temperature in the upper 60s, cloudy tomorrow. We'll talk about a weekend rain chance and a whole lot more in a few minutes. Thanks, Chuck. And MSU's very own Kenneth Martin, a finance professor, has been recognized as a top in the state. The Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching named Martin at a ceremony in Washington today. The U.S. Professors of the Year Award is considered one of the most prestigious honors in undergraduate education. Martin has been a professor at NMSU since 1995. Speaking of NMSU, a meeting is underway at the college tonight to search for a new, their next president. News Channel 9's Anusha Rasta has more from campus. Kagan, Adrian, New Mexico State University is looking for a new university president. Now the NMSU Board of Regents is hosting seven public forums to allow the university community to give their input on who they think should fill the position. School officials are trying to make this process as open and transparent as possible to the public. The first of those seven public forums started at 4 p.m. this afternoon right here on the Las Cruces campus in the Stan Fulton Athletic Center. Now the meeting is meant to be very informal with no time limit on public comments. Reporting in Las Cruces today, Anusha Rasta, News Channel 9. Well, numerical addresses in Las Cruces need to be visible. The Las Cruces Fire and Police Departments are encouraging every home and property owner to properly display their numerical address near the front entrance of their house and along the curb. This will help police, fire, or ambulance crews who are often responding to emergencies quickly identify the correct address. City ordinance requires that numbers or letters be no less than two inches in width and three inches in height. There may be a new Walmart coming to Horizon City. A Horizon City spokesperson tells News Channel 9 that plans are underway for the store on the southwest corner of Horizon and Darrington. The area approved covers more than 24 acres. Horizon City Council will discuss further steps to finalize that process on November 27th. While well, American families gather around the turkey this Thanksgiving, a lot of that turkey will go uneaten. According to the USDA, 35% of perfectly good turkey meat in the U.S. does not get eaten after it's purchased by consumers. And according to the Natural Resources Defense Council, this Thanksgiving alone, Americans will toss an estimated $282 million worth of uneaten turkey in the trash. And while some may have leftovers, others are struggling to even get a holiday meal. That's why Operation Hope is planning to hand out Thanksgiving meals to hundreds of families this weekend. The organization is teaming up with Destiny Christian Church to hand out Thanksgiving meals to those in need. We see a great need. Many people respond and say, I would not have had a holiday uh, meal without this. And so it's very gratifying uh, because uh, of many people coming together and are having a great director and their experience of efficiently distributing the food, uh, it, it makes a bigger impact and we're able to touch many more families. So here's the information you need to know. It's happening Saturday starting at 9 a.m. at the Vista Isleta Methodist Church at 11860 Rojas, as well as Destiny Family Christian Church at 9615 Dyer. For more information, you can call 915-351-9967. Well, El Pasoans love going to the movies. That's right, and get your popcorn ready. A new 13-screen theater is in the works. We'll let you know when and where you can expect to see it open up. That's next.